All right, good afternoon. Uh, injury report. Uh, so uh, Jaquan Brisker and Kyler Gordon did not practice again today, and they'll be out for the game. Uh, so I know you guys uh, saw that, and uh, that's really all I have for you in terms of injury. Uh, still working through their, uh, both of their issues uh, that they have, and one's in protocol working through that, and then Kyler's just working through his hamstring. So we'll see where it goes. Uh, hopeful for next week, but we'll see where, where it goes from there. Um, in terms of the guys playing in for him, you know, we had the guys in there last week that have a lot of experience for us. Um, and uh, those guys did well, and they prepared well this week. So we're excited about that. Had a good week of practice. Uh, just finished up the uh, red zone uh, session. I uh, thought it was good. thought it was crisp. Uh, walkthroughs were good, and also the on-field work was also uh, really good too. So I know the guys are excited about this competition. Uh, we haven't uh, you know, played in a little bit of time, so I know the guys are excited to uh, compete against these guys. Uh, in Washington. So uh, with that, I'll take questions. Do you have a sense with Jaquan where he's at mentally dealing with everything right now for the last couple of years? He's in a good spot. Yeah, he really is. He's in a good spot. We visit, visited a while uh, yesterday, and he, he's in a good spot. Um, the reports out of Washington are that uh, Jaden Daniels is going to be a game-time decision. Does, does this sound like good old-fashioned gamesmanship coming from D.C.? Uh, well, you know, it's if you focus on yourself, and it's about us mentality. I don't think it does uh, much. I just think that we just prepare the way we prepare and, and get ready uh, for him to play. And if uh, Marcus is in there, uh, we're going to play the game still. You know, and uh, it's uh, and that's really about it. Focus it on us, and it's about us. Do you have a Do you have a hunch whether you want to say that loud or not? But do you have a hunch as to who is going to play? Yeah, I really don't. I really don't. I, I don't. I don't think that way. So we'll be uh, kicking the ball off, and we'll see. Did you have to use two different scout team quarterbacks throughout no. the week? No, no, no. Because, you know, when you look at the game last week, you know, when he came in early, they operated the same way. They ran the same offense. It was the same exact offense that they ran before. So I don't see uh, those guys changing. Uh, they believe in their system. It's very effective, and uh, they're going to use that system. When you do have a game time decision like this for an opponent, what's the process like for you guys on, like, Sunday morning when you find out what, you know, who is playing? Sure, yeah, in this case, not that much, yeah. not that much, because like I said, they're, they're using the same offense, running the same plays, and, and uh, so it's really not that big of an adjustment for us. What's the biggest challenge getting you guys ready, coming out of a bye? Yeah, just uh, I, I would say just pad ready, you know, getting pad ready. So we had a really good pads practice on Wednesday. Um, I think that's important. I think bringing the guys back in on Monday – and having a walkthrough and getting them back into the football uh, side of things, I think is very important. And then working through into that Wednesday, have a real good pads practice that way. And the sense of urgency to improve um, on the items that we talked about with each individual uh, and then each unit. Uh, we have a, a few things on, on all sides of the ball uh, to do that and uh, just really creating that uh, atmosphere. Terrell Smith, after missing three games, coming back, how do you feel about where he's at? What do you Secondary. Yeah, he's good. He's in a good spot. Uh, he's he's done a lot for us in the past. Uh, he's he started for us. He's uh, played well for us, and you know we're expecting him. He'll be in there some and rotating a little bit. So it's uh, going to be exciting for him to be able to uh, you know play in the secondary. And he, he's make, made a lot of impactful plays for us in the past. Two of Caleb's maybe Caleb's two worst games have come on the road in the two true road games that you've had. What's the challenge for a young guy to get comfortable in those uncomfortable situations? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we're talking about a small sample size here, right? Beginning of his career. So I would say that, uh, you know, he's he is where he is right now, and he's looking to improve every single week. Um, and this week's no different. Um, and really just, you know, overall improvement, overall quarterbacking, leading the team. Um, so that's what he's going to do this week. The, I mean, that last road game was, what, four or five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Just given how much he has grown during that time, does it feel to you like that was – you know, a year ago. I mean, does it feel really far? It does. It does. It always feels that way, right? So it's, it's a week to week, and every week seems like it's about four weeks. But, uh, you know, so it does seem like a long time ago. Uh, you put a lot of work and preparation every single week preparing for that particular opponent, uh, getting our team ready, guys coming together to really put the game plan together. So it's a lot of work every single week. And, uh, again, he's a few weeks away from that now, so he's in a good spot. When you look at your offense, what struck you about some of the things you've been able to unlock with the screen game in particular? Yeah, well, I think the screen game is always about timing. You know, you had to have really good timing on it, you know, when the uh, for the blocks of the linemen, you know, up here. Um, a little bit different in college. They can be six six or seven or eight, ten yards down the field. So that's a little bit different. But uh, And then just put your skill in position to make plays. So you put your skill 
in the space uh, to make plays, and you can do that different ways. Uh, you know, outside tunnel screens, slow screens, slip screens by the tight end, you know, different screens that they utilize, uh, that every team utilizes. But I think you, you get what you emphasize. If you emphasize and work on the timing of it, I think that's when it's good. When you get those to go for, for some explosives, what does that do to strain an opposing defense when they've got to respect that element of things as well? Yeah, it's, it's big. It's big because, you know, you uh, – you know, there's a separation there between, you know, the, the, the rushers, you know, and then that, that second line of defense, you know, depending on what coverage contour you put out there. But I do believe that uh, it does stress you out. You know, it stresses out the, especially with the uh, dynamic athlete, you know, that Washington has and that we also have. You got to do really good, do a good job of leveraging the ball and cupping the football uh, in that space, you know, and then uh, really closing that space um, as fast as you can from the front line to the second line to the back line. Man, with regard to the, Commander's uncertainty at quarterback. Can you recall a time in your career where you were in that situation and, and either overthought it or, or it ended up not being a big deal? In other words, was there ever is there ever a lesson learned somewhere you learned how to handle that uh, based on previous experience where you didn't know who the quarterback was going to be and then well, it either mattered or it didn't? Yeah. Um, I would say that would be different if you're, if you're going to talk about a different way to play, you know, but I don't see that here. Um, but you know, to reflect on your question, I would say that yes, uh, probably at receiver, uh, where you're going to move your coverages and your contours towards that receiver and taking that guy away on first, second, and third down. Uh, if you had a, a really good receiver like that, you didn't know if he was going to play or not, so you'd have to have a, a plan and then for him being up and then a backup plan. Man, you guys have a chance at your fifth one of the season this week. Didn't get a chance at that till week uh, till December last year. How have you noticed the, the difference in this year affecting the guys in the locker? Yeah, just the guys are, are, are preparing well, and they trust each other. They believe in each other, have faith in each other, uh, really just uh, that. You know, and guys are really working towards a common goal to get, you know, one week at a time and get the job done for that particular week. And this week's been no different. The guys have worked really hard. I can see the trust and the belief uh, in each other, and they just keep working that way and preparing and trying to improve each week. Matt, the commander's awesome. offense has created a lot of explosive plays. What, what has allowed them to really do that? And does motion, you also utilize a lot of the motion, does that affect the, like how they're able to create those? Explosions? Yeah, it goes back to what I was just talking about before. They get their athletes in space, you know, and they do a really good job with that. And they've hit some good runs too. You know, they've really done a good job with that. Um, they're, they're top in the league in both run and pass in terms of explosives. So um, their scheme has done it. And also just putting people in space.